One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine. All right, here's your warning. This is gonna be a very technical video. Not a lot's going on. A lot of gear counting is going on in comparisons from run transmission to a different transmission, comparisons from a 2015 secondary clutch to a 2016 secondary clutch. So not the most entertaining stuff, but it's pretty educational. If you ever wanted to know how to re-gear a transmission. So in my case, all I did is I'm changing high gear I figured out how to do it and watch this video and you can figure out how to do it. Uh, send me a message. I could send you the documents that I've been referencing for this. It makes it way easier to have these spreadsheets, but here's what the razor looks right now. We're waiting for parts to show up. All right, let's get to the video. Okay. I already opened up the 2018 XP 1000 transmission so what i want to do now is all of this is right here compare all of these to those and see what's different um, i did notice that this shift fork deal is different so this has got a little spring actuated thing on it see that and the 2015 one does not so this might be a safety for like park or something this reverse chain, that's a factory 1000. See how it's only got one, two, three, four plates. So it's four, three, four, three. So if you look at the high lifter one that I put in this one, it's a little bit wider. So this one's one, two, three, four, five, and four. So it's got one extra plate. I guess it's not extreme difference, but it is bigger. But anyways, let's compare the difference. So let's compare the rear. This should be the exact same, but I don't know for sure. I don't know if it's got a Polaris number on it, maybe. And I did write 15 on all of the 15 parts. This way I don't get them mixed up. But what we need to do is just compare and make sure those are the same. The same tooth count. So let's do that. There's two 53. So those are the same. So the next thing I want to see the gears on is where this mesh is. So I'm just going to try and follow it back and see where the difference is. So where this mesh is, is right here on this gear. So we'll count these teeth and then go to the other one and count it. 12, 13, 14, 15. So those are the same. All right. So then since we're on this shaft, let's go up to this one here. 4, 5, 26, 27, 28, 29. Okay. So that's the same. So let's go to this bottom one. This is super fun stuff, isn't it? Okay. 1, 6, 47, 48. Let's count this guy. 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44. All right, so that one is 44. But that one is a replaceable gear, so you could just replace that on the shaft. So we're just going to do this. 4, 4. So we know that one's different. So then that means that one has to be different then. So that stuff is the same. This is where it starts getting different. Let's separate these out. Because then this is going to be different. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's 42. So that and that has got to be the same then. 29. So that one's 29. So this one is 25. So that means this one is also different. 5, 6, 6, 67. 364. So it appears that low is those 64 and 27. Sixty-seven and twenty-five. I think what I need to do is get the computer so I could do some comparison. So this is the 2018, and what I have found is the differences between this and the 2015 is low gearing, which are these two gears, that's low only, are different on the 2015. So these ones are way higher gearing, so that means you can go way faster in low, which is not what I want in a crawler. But this is part of this shaft. So this is the transmission secondary, the secondary clutch shaft. 
So this whole shaft would have to be replaced. I don't even know if they make one that's this style with the smaller gearing here, but I would have to do this gear and this gear, which is a possibility. That's low only. Um, the next ones that are different are these ones. So this is the input from the secondary, and then it transfers over to this shaft, which this is the one that you could shift from low reverse to high. Right now it's in low. Um, so when this is spinning, you're transferring power through this gear to this gear. And then this gear is part of the shaft. So this gear always spins. This is what transfers power to here, which ends up going to your um, front diff. And then this goes to your rear axles. So the 2015 snorkel gear and this gear is exact same. The pinion gear for the rear is the exact same. This gear right here is the same. This gear is different, but you could replace this on the shaft. This gear is different. This is this entire shaft. This gear is different, which you could replace this. It's a separate gear. And then this gear is different. And this one, you have to do the entire shaft. So that's where we're at right now. Now I need to kind of punch in some numbers with the laptop and play with it and see if I can get the parts that I want with the ratios that I want to make this work. So that's a lot, but that's where we're at. All right, here's that fancy spreadsheet. I'm not taking credit of this. Somebody else way smarter than me made this. But this row that I have highlighted, it's 2018 XP 1000. I'm just verifying what is what. So he's even got drawings on here. So 1A is this gear that's right here. This is input shaft. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count that, make sure it's 42 to match this. We're on 42. So that is 42. And then 1B would be the gear that that meshes with, if I remember correctly, yeah. So those would be the same. So then the other one that I want to double check is 3A, which this chart is accurate to this. So no offense to the guy that created it, but I don't trust nobody. Everybody fat finger stuff. So 2018 XP 1000, this is all the data for this. So if we compare that to a 2015, which is what we have, XP 1000, those should be the numbers that we get on that. So let's double check those real quick. 1A and 1B is high gear. So I'm gonna just remark this. High gear, so this is reverse, just so that when we're looking back and forth, we know what's what. 3A and 3B, so that's where this one was 29 and 64, which is, these two gears right here, so see 2964, that's low. On the 15, those two gears are 25 and 67. So see this is right, 25 and 67, so those are all accurate. Intermediate are these two, which is 4A and 4B. 4A, so 4B is here, 4A is there, so this is 4 um b and that's for a which was different on this one so that should be the ace 325 gears so 4a was 44 on the 2018 is 4 44 and 29 so then this is this guy so 48 on this one, which is 48, and 25 should be the one that this meshes with, so that should be this one right here. Should be 25, so we need to verify that. 24, 25. So that is in fact 25, which is intermediate, which this, I'm gonna also reword this and say ace gear all gear reduction remember i was saying this is high gear only this is low gear only and then this is always driving all the time so if you just change this it changes everything so that changes the entire final drive so what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to make sure what is the difference between what we currently have so the difference between what we currently have from the 2018 to 
the 2015. So if we just put this transmission in there, our low is gonna be 53% higher, which is, that's not what we want. Our high is gonna be 26% higher, and our reverse is gonna be 26% higher. So that's why we don't want that. If we were to manipulate some numbers on this sheet really quick, if we just were to change over the ACE 325 gearing, so our high and our reverse would be exactly the same as the 2015, but our low would be 21% higher. See, this is where I don't like this. Just if I change that, that's still not where I want it to be. The low is too high. So what I'm trying to figure out, so let me undo what I did, because watch these numbers are right there. See? So what else can I change to try and get better ratio with using all this setup? So the next thing is, if we were to just change, put this shaft and this gear in place of those, so this 25 and 67 in place of this 29 and 64, what does that get us? So, so if we change just this, 25, 67, that's just the low gearing, then where does that get us here? Yeah, so see that gets us that 26%. And then if we do the ACE gearing on top of that, then we get the exact same gear ratio. But what I wanna play around with is I would like high to be higher gearing. So if I were to do that, then how would we, I think the only way that we could change high gear is this, this 1A and 1B. 1A is this, so this is this whole shaft, and then 1B is that. So that's a replaceable gear and that's a shaft. 4352, ooh, 4549. So that's a high lifter. That's essentially what I want. I wanna put all of my stuff in there with the exception of the high gear, which is these two. So I need this shaft and that gear, which I think you can change that. 2019 XP High Lifter RT has 45, 49. That changes the only high, which is how this goes. So it's 13%. So that means that our base mile per hour calculation is 77. Our reduction would be 89. So if I did the 45, 49 high gear, I would get higher high gear, but reverse and low would be the same. So I'm gonna say that if I buy those two gears, I should be able to put them in here because I think the rest of this would be the same. That's what I'm gonna go with here. And if it's not right, then it's not right. But anyways, I think that's where we're at. I need to, uh, Find pricing for this shaft, that gear, and then I need all the bearings and all the seals. That's what we're doing right now. We're doing some shopping. All right, cheapest place to buy a bearing and seal kit was Amazon. So Amazon was the cheapest place to buy the bearing and seal kit. It's an all balls kit. Uh, Sandcraft also has it, it's like $400. Amazon's got it for $197. And then PolarisParts123.com is the cheapest place to buy any Polaris part that I've found so far. It's those two parts. It's a Polaris item 323-5396 and 323-5953. So that'll give me 14% higher high gear, but it doesn't affect low or reverse. So that was 262 because shipping is stupid. So um 462 bucks to do new bearings new seals and a higher high gear now i'm just trying to figure out the difference between the 15 and the 16 and newer secondary so this is what i got this is a 15 and this is a 16 or newer. So I wanted to just take the helix out of this and just see if it'll work straight into there. And if it will, then that's all I'm gonna do, is just take the spring and the helix out and put it right into there. But I'm not sure if it's exactly the same or not. So we're gonna find out. All right, what did we learn today? <laughs> a lot. So looking at this chart, that once again, I didn't create, some other super genius created it. 
Let me pull it up real quick. Looking at this chart right here, which I kind of modified a little bit. The razors with the highest high gear, so only high gear. That's all that we're looking at. So the highest ratio. So we're talking about like high speed, which is kind of counterintuitive because my razor is built for crawling. But remember, I did the ACE 325 gearing in it, which lowers it by 27%. So that makes all of the gears low, high, and reverse 27% lower than my factory. Um, but high was a little bit too low. So cruising around in like Hurricane Utah and Moab, Utah on the highways in the streets, it was just wrapped out in high. So I wanted to go up higher with that ratio. So what I did is I looked at this chart and I found out that my razor, which is right here, is 42 and 53 ratios. And that's for high gear. And if you look at this, almost all of them are that 4253. There's only a couple that are different. And the most extreme is the high lifter or the um, rock trail edition. So that's 45 and 49, which just that change right there equates for to that 13.711 ratio change just for high. So for me, what that means is if I just change that, it says right now in low I could do 36.3, and high I could do 77.1, and in reverse I could do 40.5. So if I only change the high gear, low's the same, 36.3, high 89.13, so that's that 13.7% increase, and then reverse is 40. Which that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted to be able to go a little bit faster and high without wrapping the shit out of the engine. That's what we learned about the transmission. So you can change things inside of it. You just got to be patient and look at the different parts manuals and see what will be affected. The other thing that we found, which we're, we knew already, is the 2014 and 15 output shaft is different than the 2016 and newer for a 1000. So here's the output shaft. For a 15. So that goes in there like that. And there's one for a 16 or newer. So that means you have to have a different secondary, which I bought a different secondary that's a 16 or newer secondary, which is this guy right here. And what's different about it, this hub that's right here, so how this engages, there's two sets of splines. I don't know if you can see in there, but the two set of splines engage here and there. So, my next problem that I ran into is I didn't have a helix for this secondary or the spring or anything else. Well, lucky for me, the 2015s is the exact same part. So I just took the parts out of the 2015 secondary, swapped it over to the 2016 secondary. The spring, the locking spider, the rubber insert for the spider, and the helix swapped everything over. So it should, in theory, not even change any clutching. So that's the other thing that we learned. A lot of learning today. So I got those parts on order, new bearings, new seals and everything. Once those show up, I'll get all that built and probably make a wrap up video on that because this has been a lot today. So probably make one whole video out of this.